Are we live? Um, hey guys, hello, hello guys. It's Big Jack Films here. Welcome to another live stream. Uh, feel like it's been a while since I've done one of these. Not 100%, but it's just more just, it's going to be a very, I guess, sort of quiet live stream. Who knows? But yeah, uh, welcome to our Wednesday live stream. Uh, it's been a very chill week, so we're going to give you guys some updates before we get started. Uh, we're probably going to go for only an hour, not 100% yet, but we will let you know. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, this is the first week of February. We are um, pretty much, you know, uh, just chilling during the lockdowns in Toronto and everything. And I actually took a few days off. I took a few days off uh, this week, and I've been still posting videos. I had some pre-recorded. And I've just been chilling. It's been very quiet. It's been very tiring. Um, I've been working a lot. Uh, my mom came over and she helped me out with a few things. So that's been a big plus. But yeah, you know, I mean, it is my birthday week. It's my birthday is actually Saturday, guys. It is it is Saturday. Um, and I will be turning 29. Fuck me. And I think just this year has been very chill. It's very chill as it's normally been on my birthdays lately. It's not... I haven't really had many expectations or anything. Uh, that poster behind me, uh, Kaiju Network, is Back to the Future Part 3, signed by Christopher Lloyd. So there you go. And I might actually bring you on if you want, uh, uh, Kaiju Network. But yeah, um, I'm just going to open some fan mail first. But yeah, so uh, birthday is Saturday, and I'm just going to be relaxing. I'm not going to be really doing anything. I might do something. Um, might do something Saturday. I'm not 100% on that. I might have, like, a friend up. I don't know. I got to figure things out. So it's going to be a very chill day. You want to know what I pretty much got for my birthday? I got a bunch of Amazon gift cards. So I bought a bunch of shit. I was literally last night, I was literally got all my Amazon cards for my birthday. And I'm just like, I'm ordering shit. How you doing? So ordered a few things and I'll probably do a fan mail fanatic on that. I would love to like open up uh, some of the stuff I got off Amazon. I got some pretty cool shit. But um, yeah, uh, that will definitely be happening at some point. I do want to show some of the stuff I've been buying. Some of them are sponsored stuff. I'm really due for that. So I know my hair is getting long, guys. I know it's, you know what? I keep it around for continuity, but I'm, a lot of people are saying they dig the long hair. Like chicks are digging this shit right now, guys. I don't know why everybody else ain't growing out their, their hair. It's crazy. But yeah, it's just going to be a very quiet stream. It's not going to be too big. It's not going to have too many people. I don't want to bring uh, really, if anybody, on. I mean, I, I'll debate. I'll be picky on that this time around. But, yeah, I'm going to be very picky on who I bring on this time because it's just been a very it's been a very hard week. Uh, and it's mostly for a couple reasons. Uh, one, a lot of cons have been shut down this year again, uh, specifically G-Fest. And Anime North is a potential, like, if they're going to like let loose the gallow on it or something, because it is very concerning on our end, not necessarily because we know COVID is a risk. We understand that and everybody should be safe, but it's more so business and future projects might be in jeopardy if these cons are canceled, like GFS being one of them. So I'm going to plan B or C on that front and uh, with GFS stuff, but with Anime North, it's very much up in the air. And if it's canceled, uh, then I'm going to have to find a backup plan for certain projects or put them on hold again. And I hate that. That's one of the things that has been kind of been letting me take a few days off is because I don't want to disappoint you guys. I have been trying to pressure myself to get these videos I've been promising for years done. And some of these have been pushed, have been delayed year after year after year after year because of what's going on. And so now I'm like, cause the thing is I'm thinking, should I just wait till they're done when they're done? Or should I just try to compromise and make something for you guys that might not be my original ambition, but at least it's something, but that has been kind of on my thought process. I've also been coming up with new ideas. I've been coming up with some new stuff. I want to do, um, little things, um, just sort of like here and there, but I'm taking a bit of my time, a little time right now. Um, I I'll say this, that during the birthdays, I'm kind of, at a little bit of an exhaustive point and I'm still taking a break from the normal schedule I do. Cause I usually spring through when Christmas is our like no break train. Essentially we are just working on stuff. So, um, that is what we're going to be doing. We're just, it's just taking some time off and we're just relaxing, but we're still going to put out videos for you guys. We have our Inuyasha vlogs every, every Monday that is, that is returned for season three. And obviously guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed my review of the first movie. It was really fun to do. 
Um, very fun to put together. Huge thank you to Looney G Bunny uh, for helping out on that one and a few other people for helping with the episode in general. Um, I hope you guys may manage to take some time to um, donate to Kirby Murrow's uh, uh, charity because, you know, he was a really good friend of ours. And if you guys can go donate to him, that would be fantastic. So there's all that. But yeah, it's just been, it's been rather quiet. It's been, it's been rather quiet and very just, just hush hush. Let's just work on stuff. But um, yeah, it, that's what it's going to be. And just seeing what happens during the spring when COVID opens. I mean, I just heard they want to open up the schools again. And that was one of the major reasons the outbreak came back. And I'm literally like, oh, Dr. Evil, I'm like, how about no? It's the dumbest thing. But anyway, so uh, on this stream, we've got a couple of bits of fan mail, which is cool. Um, From our obvious a fan that has always been sending us stuff from Pot for our Potter's Town fan. We're just going to call him Potter from now on. Um, but yeah, that's happening. Uh, and yeah, and guys, I know, see, this is the thing I'm noticing in the comments, people are asking about discord now because I've opened Pandora's box. Now, now that I've considered getting a discord, now everybody wants to be in it. Everybody wants a piece of it. And I'm like, Oh, did I make a terrible mistake? I don't know. I'm debating it. I'm debating it and I'm not no promises. And um, I just want to let you guys know, if you want to reach out to me, if you have any questions or requests or anything, just message me on Twitter and, um, I don't know, just message me on Twitter is the best way to reach out to me because I've been kind of, t again, because I'm taking time off and because like I've been working on a lot of stuff, there's been a lot of pressure lately and I'm also, you know, fans, there's a lot of fans that will come to me and even like they're so desperate for answers for stuff that they'll reach out to my personal Facebook which you shouldn't do that. Um, if you want to reach out to me and be professional, just go to my Inst uh, go to Instagram or go to Twitter. Don't message me on my personal Facebook page. So other than that, um, that's what it is. I know a lot of people have questions, but I just I really just kind of um, I just kind of like I I don't want to I don't want to associate too much because there's just a lot going on in my life right now that I just I can't really like unless it's the people I'm already connected with. So there's that. Um, but I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm pretty much thinking of, I, I will consider a discord, but there's no promises, but I know from people who do run discords, it can be very pestering and very pestering where it just de never stops and it can span your phone and make it slow. So there you go. So, oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, uh I can't pronounce your name. Eduardo. Is that, is that from like Mexico or something? The shirt I'm wearing, Jared is a grin shirt because why not? That's kind of the mood everybody's in. So we're going to open some fan mail. And then we're just going to have some, we'll read some of the questions in the comments and everything. Um, I know a lot of you guys have so many requests. I'm surprised. I love all the requests I get, guys. But it's just there's a lot of stuff happening right now where I just cannot take requests. However, I'm thinking about updating my Patreon, which, by the way, guys, if you want to go support my Patreon, just a dollar more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. Um, we're thinking about updating our Patreon if you donate to a very high-end reward then you can maybe request a review at some point, like a really legit review, but it would have to be one review per request. We can't do like a franchise. If you donate a certain amount and it's like, do the whole franchise. It's like, no, it's only one episode, but we're really thinking about it because, you know, Patreon has actually been picking up lately. So we all really appreciate all your help guys. So let's see what our Potter's town friend has sent us this time. He sent us, um, Oh, there's a character. There's a guy named James Baxter that did a bunch of animations. So he sent us that. Best movies of 2020. This is what he sent us. Uh, Wolf Walker, Sonic the Hedgehog, Soul, uh, Little Bear Beans, the movie, uh, One and Only Tavern, Over the Moon, Tenet, uh, Onward, Invisible Man, Worst Movies of 2020, Mulan, Artemis Fowl. Um, oh, God. Yeah, so it's just a bunch of... Um, lists and stuff which is pretty cool i always like this kind of stuff and it's occasional but it's there and he sent us one other thing uh so there's that let me just uh, open this up no i'm gonna say if jt is reborn or kaiju network wants to jump on because you know it's kind of kind of lonely doing these on my own i try to answer as much as i can but yeah it has been a very very quiet week for everybody oh we got a super chat holy crap hold up um Ike Studio says 130 to 150 ish. I think is a fair price. Exactly. I mean, I was con I wasn't wanting to say the price, but I'm thinking that's going to be the price because look, guys, I love you guys to death, but we need to pay the bills. We need to pay the bills in this apartment. So like that that would that's the kind of stuff in terms of reviews. 
we would definitely jump on if that was the case. If we did Patreons like that big of a donation. So we'll we'll consider that essentially. If you got that much to spare, we we'll, might do a review of your request. So there you go. All right. So we have your oh, this is awesome. So as you guys know, um, well, thank first of all, thank you so much, Ike. Guys, go subscribe to his channel for that. We'd really uh, appreciate, you know, go to supporting uh, donators. Um, very quickly, Jared. Uh, say, Jack, for all the Kong reviews of the Babar episode one. To, yeah. So basically, um, Jared has requested me to do a Kong review of a certain episode of Babar, and I'm I put that in the idea pot, and I will I am it's in the ideas in case I need something. So I will let you know, Jared, when I get on that. But Back to um, what our fan mail has said. He, so, as you guys know, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, I have done the original trilogy. I am still working on the prequels. They're just We kind of took a break for a little bit because we're focusing on other things. But, guys, go check out uh, the uh, our trilogy reviews. They're really well together. We did put out a trailer for uh, the prequels, which we're really hoping we can put out by 2022. No promises. We're just trying to figure things out. But... Uh, I'm a big fan of Clone Wars. I like the Clone Wars TV show, like the 3D show, but I'm more a fan of Gara Tarakovsky's Clone Wars that he did from 2003 to 2004. Now, I know they're technically no longer canon, but I still consider them canon. Like, if you if you want to kind of jam Clone Wars into the canon, uh, you'd have to watch um, the first season of 2D Clone Wars and the second season of 2D, or the second episode of season two of 2D Clone Wars, like right when Anakin is knighted as a Jedi Knight, and then you go into the rest of the Clone Wars, and then if you want to kind of in between, you can actually um, do the rest of the series. So that's Clone Wars. That's kind of what it does. Um, and that's basically kind of the thing. So that's that's how I see it. But a fan sent us this, and this is lovely, is a poster for the 2D Clone Wars, all in marker. And I love the details in these. These are absolutely beautiful. So I'm a big uh, Tarakoski Clone Wars fan. Like, I mean, people ask me, like, what's my favorite thing he's done? I mean, I love Dexter's Lab. I love Powerpuff Girls. I love Samurai Jack. Um, but for me, and I know a lot of people want me to watch Primal. I get it. I just haven't had time to watch Primal. I just haven't. I don't have cable. I, I don't use cable. And it, it, it's taking me forever to find it. However, my favorite thing he ever did was Clone Wars. Clone Wars was top-notch Tarakoski. He, like, I'm surprised that Lucasfilm hasn't reached out to him for stuff for Star Wars. Because I think Tarakoski with Star Wars, especially now, would be amazing. And even may, perhaps even top the Clone Wars that he did. Because the Clone Wars uh, micro series was fantastic. I, I love that show. Death. The music is great. I listened to the go listen to the track Anakin versus Ventress when they're fighting on Yavin Four. Um, is honestly a one of the best pieces of Star Wars music I've ever heard. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so he also sent us this. Uh, oh, that's awesome. He sent us a poster of the Lord of the Rings, and we're big Lord of the Rings fans. We love the Lord of the Rings. Um, we do want to get to that trilogy at some point. Um, but definitely, um, that is definitely going to be happening. So, um, but thank you again. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, we really like the artwork. There's one more piece here and just bear with me. I, I'll read your thing in a sec. One moment. Let's see what this is. Uh, wow. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. This is so cool. Now I want, okay. This is not our version. Oh, wait, you know what? Wow. So our friend sends us another piece of marker art, and it's a poster for Kong 96. How cool is that? Like, you got all the... At first, I didn't know which year, but that is amazing. Again, thank you so much. We have to keep them anonymous for some but our Potterstown friend, thank you so much for sending us these. These are lovely. Um, hi, Nerdcage. Nerdcage, if you want to jump on, we'll have you on. I, I'm, I'm kind of bored, so why the fuck not? But I want to read this one from Ike. He said, trying to send stuff I told you, but five feet of snow. Totally understandable. Shipping right now is a pain in the ass, and that's the one thing I still have a great deal of patience for is the post office, at least. Holy crap, it has been crazy. You know what? I'm gonna send I'm gonna send Nerd Cage our, our uh, link to our uh Steam Yard if he would like to join us because yeah, it's just it's been a crazy week and we just need to talk to people. So I'm gonna send the link out to a few people if they would like to join us. Because I think there is definitely some people who would like to maybe perhaps jump on. 
Uh, so let me just uh, pop these fuckers in here and see if any of these guys want to jump on. So just in case, just in case, because you know you never know. Um, let's see how many, how many, how many distances it takes to get. I'm at my second job. If I'm gonna be there out ninety minutes, okay, no worries, man. I'll I'll wait for. I can wait ninety minutes, so an hour and a half. That's fine. But let me send this out to a few people who might be interested, because I don't know if they'd be up, but they are totally up for coming up down to our stream if they would like. I'm also going to send one to Monstrosities if they are ever interested. So if Matt wants to jump on, he can jump on. But it's just going to be, again, it just, it's going to be very minimal, very quiet. I don't want too much clutter because it has been a bit of an exhausting week and I am very tired. So just bear that in mind, people. There's that. Um, so who knows? Maybe somebody, maybe somebody will jump on and somebody might be interested in joining us. Um, um, what the fuck? Okay, I'll have to check that out later, but I, I saw a thing on my Twitter thing. But anyway, so yeah, there's all our artwork. Again, guys, thank you all so much for sending it to us. If you have any uh, mail you want to send to us, you can. So at this address, Big Jack Films, P.O. Box 326, Queensville, Ontario, L0G100. We're going to be debating if we're going to be putting our, uh, our uh, what is it, Um, our, uh, our, our, our we're going to change our mailing address. But that is a potential. That is a potential happening. You know what, actually? I haven't talked to him in a while. Let me get the motherfucker on here if he wants to jump on. If Nick wants to jump on here, fuck it. He is most welcome. We haven't had Nick on in a while. And I think it'd be fun to do. Um, when you got a buddy get my... Yeah, and we might have uh, Matt on. We might have a few people on. It's just, it's going to be a very, again, a very quiet stream. But not too many people. It just depends. Because, again, guys, it's been a rough week. Uh, for me personally, just because of all the stuff happening in all our productions, uh, comics and books. Um, I have a few, I mean, they're all down there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's all my books and I occasionally will pick one up and read it. There's a couple I still need to read because I do need to, um, do some research for future episodes, but I just got a bunch of books. In fact, guys, if you want, if you want a book that actually I, I personally, uh, had a hand in, which is pretty cool. Um, let me find this book. Um, I think it's back here. Yeah. Okay. So, and one book I forgot to mention that I didn't include in my Kong Books episode, which is pretty cool. Um, I got this little pocket book about a year ago. It's a TCM flip Kong book, and it's just a little thing. But what's really cool is if you do it, it's one of those like flip animation books. So if you like do this, you can see Kong moving in the background. And I love these things. These are such a cool novelty. But I don't know if you can see that. But let me try this. Look at that. I mean, it's in backwards. But how cool is that? It's like every frame Willis O'Brien had in that shot. It's just one shot from the movie. But you just, you know. Meow. I love these things so much. These are just really nice little little trinket books, you know, that you can just see. For, and if you want to do a study, there's frame by frame one shot from the film in just one little book. That's pretty cool. But... For those who want to, uh, I actually have uh, contributed to a book uh, called um, that is actually on Amazon that you can pick up right now, and I will put a link to it later. Kong Unmade, the uh, Lost Films of Skull Island. So the author of the book, John Lemley, uh, has done a few books on Amazon. He also has Jaws Unmade, which I do want to get, but he his book is actually very informative, and it's um, I'm in the book, and it's a lot of fun. This book is amazing. So um, if you guys want to see me put my two cents into this a little bit, uh, definitely do. Definitely go buy this book. It is available. In fact, I'm going to put a link to it in the description for this thing. Let me let me just update this. So if you guys refresh your thing, you'll probably be able to um, uh, jump on and like and like basically get a copy of the book. So let me just go to that. Let me let me put that in the description. But it's a wonderful book, and I had a huge helping hand in it. Uh, let's see here. Kong Unmade. Um, you might have to switch it for Amazon.com because I use Amazon.ca. I'm, I'm Canadian. But I will update that. Let me just um, just put in here uh, Kong Unmade. Just so we can have something there. You guys want to buy the book? And then I'm also going to put, put in here because why the hell not? Um, if you guys, I don't know if you guys want to send us a little thing for our birthday, but we're, we have. I don't know. Would anybody be interested in knowing our Amazon wish list? Because we have an Amazon wish list. If you guys want to send us some stuff through the mail, there is our Amazon wish list. So let me just um, 
I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna send you guys the Amazon wish list in case you guys want to, in case you guys want to, uh, give us a little something. You know, we we always appreciate that. Let's see here. Uh, Big Jeff wish list. You know, nothing there. Yeah. So here's um, here's our Amazon wish list. I'm gonna put this in the description, but it's all there, and I'm actually gonna keep this up because we always do appreciate these um. This kind of stuff sent to us, and it, you can make for an excellent uh, fan mail fanatic, honestly. So, just gonna update that. There we go. So, if you guys refresh this video, if you guys refresh it, and you go in the description, you can actually see our Amazon wish list and where you can buy Kong Unmade. Guys, please support this guy's work. He's absolutely incredible, and he has another book, Jaws Unmade, which we'll talk about the these canceled sequels remakes reboots um and it's funny enough one other thing i actually heard i've been hearing word about this from uh, some sources that one of my favorite like books or one not one of my favorite books but like a book i really cherish is back to the future the ultimate visual history because it's not only a great behind the scenes story on the back to the future trilogy but it comes with all these replicas of stuff from the film including this was real this is really cool to own it's a uh, pass for Back to the Future, the ride, the staff at the Institute of Future Technology. There's, um, you know, uh, what is it? George McFly's, um, oh, well, that's ripping. I gotta get some of this repaired because it's just, the sticky shit is awful. Um, there's uh, the cover of George McFly's book. Um, okay, so bear in mind, guys, I'm gonna get this fixed at some point, but it's the Western Union letter that Doc gave to Marty in, uh, 1885, so that's in the book. There's even the letter that Marty said to him, do not open until 1985, and inside is the letter. And these are exact replicas from the movie, from Louis Cafe, uh, and, it, and it literally says, you know, like in the movie, Dear uh, dear Doc Brown, on the night that I go back, you know, at 1.30 a.m., you will be shot. Please take the precaution. So it's all there. This is a wonderful book. This is a wonderful book. Uh, that you all should get. Again, it is on Amazon. No, we're just talking about books, Eric. Um, because why not? I know a lot of live streamers have been talking about their books. But what I love, some of my favorite pieces are things like you have um, photographs of uh, Lorraine and uh, George McFly. You have the photo from 1885 with Doc and Marty. But my favorite, there's a couple here that I really like. So you have um, this. So it's the photo that of Marty and his kids. And... You see, now, I don't know if you can see, but if I do that, his relatives, they, they erased from existence. So that's all there. That's amazing. It has the Doc's blueprints for the flux capacitor. So I love that. You know, after I fell on my toilet, I drew this. And it's the flux capacitor. There's, um, and then this one's, I love this. This was a nice. They, they didn't have to do this. And part of me wants to get this framed. It's a poster for Jaws 19, the 2015 sequel that Max Spielberg, apparently Steven's son, was going to make in 2015. And, you know, this time it's really, really personal. So it's almost a nod to Jaws 4. And I love this. I kind of want to get this framed. In fact, you know, I'd even tell Sean, get this book so you can frame that Jaws poster because he's a huge Jaws fan. There's even, this is crazy, um, you've got Strickland's note from detention at the school and the whole save the clock tower. And in the back you have Jennifer's number. So I love these great little things they added to the book, the back to the future, um, back to the future book. If you guys can get this, definitely do. They are wonderful pieces, but other than, but yeah, so that's, there's a lot of books I, I've been collecting gathering lately. There's a few I haven't shown yet because they are actually sponsorships. Uh, that I have to do a video on at some point. I am so far behind. So I'll probably do that when I get all my birthday stuff mailed to me. I'll do that as a big, extravagant female fanatic for you guys because I think that's where I can do it. I can do kind of like what Black Nerd Comedy does where um, I do that. And also, guys, I do have an account, but I I never use it for anything. Not yet. I still have to get the technology. But I do have a Twitch, so you guys can follow me on Twitch. And part of me does want to start doing streams on there. I just got to figure out how the fuck I'm going to do it. So if you guys want to see us do streams there, we might consider doing streams at that point. But one of the things we want to do is take from uh, YMS, yourmoviesucks.org, where he you can see if we're going to use uh, Steam, we're more than we're going to. If we're going to use uh, uh, Twitch, we're more than likely just going to be playing 
Uh, we're just going to be editing our videos, and we want to connect it to our tower, but we're also probably going to be playing some Steam and some, uh, you know, Battlefront or something. If you guys are interested, we might consider that at some point down the line. Um, but just bear with me. Uh, that might happen. So, unfortunately, Kaiju Network cannot make it, but thank you again for visiting. But let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, Ike Studio says, will there be DVDs of your movie ever up for sale? So, we have copies on VHS but we're trying to find a place to sell them. That's a little bit easier. Um, we were thinking Etsy. We're considering Etsy. We're considering a few other places, but we got to figure out all the, the shipping and manufacturing and how to do it all automatically. So it's a less of a hassle for us is the only thing we got to figure out. Um, let's see here. Uh, Gmod has a Kong model. Thoughts on Groundhog Day. Uh, we're living it every day now, or is this, we're living it every day without any end in sight. Somebody end Groundhog Day. Uh, let's see here. Uh, which is better, uh, fantasy or sci-fi? Both. They're both equally mashed. I can't decide that. I'm really, I am kind of into medieval fantasy, but I do like my sci-fi. I do like my, um, my Star Wars, my occasional Star Trek, my Gundam, all that jazz. I have not seen Last Blood. Uh, I have not, I remember watching the cartoon briefly, but I thought it was awful. Uh, favorite Ed, Ed and Eddie episodes? So this is a question I can't answer. My favorite Ed, Ed and Eddie episodes... Because I used to watch that on Cartoon Network all the time. And what was really great about the show is that it's just it was the one show I watched. So it was things like, but I, I kind of, I did miss out on later seasons. Like, I think I stayed up to season four. But then when I moved back to Canada, we never had an Ed and Eddie. They actually, it's funny because it was a Canadian produced show. Yet we only got the first season aired here on Cartoon Network. So I, or on Teletoon. So we didn't have Cartoon Network here. So by the time, like we, we've been trying to catch up. But my favorite episodes, if I had to choose, Jared, are Avast E. Eds is my personal favorite episode. That's from the end of the first season. It's where the kids um, basically have a tire swing. They want to make a, a ride out of it. And then it ends up going over into a, a creek, which that's not a creek. That's, that's a river. And they use it as a cruise line. And they set it up with sails and stuff. And freaking Ed is the propeller. And he's also, like, using his mom's, like, laundry machine as, like, a, a anchor, which impossible uh and then you know the canker show up uh to pirate their stuff and it's literally a pirate episode and i love that shit uh other than that it's things like um the uh urban ed which i believe is the clubhouse or no that's the city episode because that's a whole kong bit and one point just one bit it's not covered for a full episode uh for a full review uh there's things like uh oh, Vert Edgo, that's the one where they built the clubhouse. Really enjoy that one. I love it whenever, because I know half the time the show is high, like whatever their schemes are, are highly impractical. But when they are able to do a scheme that actually is practical, like i.e. building a clubhouse in a tree, which I've always wanted to do, uh, I'm on, on it. I mean, there's one episode where they want to impress Kevin. He's got like his dad works at the jo uh, job breaker factory. But it opens with them building a moat in the cul-de-sac and they like literally use a door to build the bridge. Now, technically, the practicality of all that is very mixed. Like it could work if you do it right, but the way they handled it was ass. But the one thing I wonder is, would the door hold the weight of like people? That's a big question. That's a question I want. I wonder if like doors, like I want to do an experiment where I get a door. And I actually want to see if it'll hold the weight as a bridge or a, a piece of, like, flotation. Um, I'm curious about that, if a door would be able to hold the weight. Uh, so there's that one. There's um, oh, there's so many great episodes. Uh, Dueling Eds was a great episode. Uh, there was, uh, what was it, Stop Looking Ed? Because I remember watching that one on Game Boy Advance video back in the day. Oh, my God. Remember Game Boy Advance video? How ass was that? That was awful. But I watched that episode a lot. Um, oh, there's some good ones out there. But those are some of my personal favorites. I grew up with the show. I love the show. I did see the big picture show that they did. And I thought it, it was a nice ending to the series. But at the same time, it I think it's because it was just at that point I was growing out of cartoons. Like, or even, at least I didn't. Like, what happened was is that I was really into Cartoon Network. Don't get me wrong. I was really into Cartoon Network in its peak day, like late 90s, early 2000s. But then I moved back to Canada in 2002. We didn't have Cartoon Network. So by the time I was able to go back and watch the rest of the series, I actually lost interest. I It started to dry up on me. It wasn't like I think it was just because a lot of it was too new. Like I think 
when I started to realize the show was kind of losing me was when we see them in school. I didn't like that. I didn't like that part of the formula. It was a nice way to expand the uh, the world, but I felt it was kind of nah. I didn't think it really fit too well into the storyline. So for me, like, I'd say 2003 is when my my love for Cartoon Network died. It was like Clone War, 2D Clone Wars was sort of the last thing that I really enjoyed that kept me watching Cartoon Network. And then after that, it sort of died down. Then there was the 3D Clone Wars. And then after that, it's just, I'm done with Cartoon Network because Cartoon Network is just not what it used to be. And I remember the last time I checked in, I remember I went on a trip. And it was like 10 years later that I had been able to check a Cartoon Network station. I clicked it and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I think the most I, re the most I ever watched when I went back to watch Cartoon Network is when I was on vacation in the States and I would travel to Florida and stuff. And I would be up watching uh, Adult Swim or Toonami on Saturdays like everybody else does. So I would watch Dragon Ball Super. I would watch Inuyasha, the final act. I would watch the anime right around. Especially if you're in a hotel. Anime is great in a hotel because you can just sit down on a Saturday and you can just watch the Adult Swim uh, Cartoon Network and really have fun. But look, here in Canada, when we moved back, a lot of these shows we didn't have. Like, we had reruns, but we didn't have, like, all the big stuff that I grew up with. In fact... Moving back, um, when I got to rewatch in Dragon Ball Z, it was the ocean dub, so it was really confusing for me, and I just thought the quality was awful. I mean, even we even watched the we had the blue water dub of GT and regular Dragon Ball. And what's funny about okay, the blue water dub of Dragon Ball is awful, but the theme song's kind of corny, but I love it. But with GT, I kind of didn't mind the GT dub that Blue Water did, and it's mostly because the the English version translation of the Japanese track Don Don was actually, I thought that was superior to the grand tour rap, which was awful. But you know, over time I did watch that. I mean, that's where I grew up with Inuyasha. Inuyasha started when I came back to the uh, Canada and I was full, I was 13 at the time. It was the right age for it. And I loved the shit out of it. It really, really transitioned me into adulthood. Uh, that was Gundam seed. It was, um, just stuff like that. I mean, I watched a lot because for us here in Canada, we have what's called our version of Adult Swim was either Bionics on YTV and Teletoon was um, the detour. And they had things like Family Guy, Robot Chicken. Uh, they had all that stuff, Rick and Morty and all that jazz. But um, we also had a show which to this day, I don't think has ever gotten a DVD Blu-ray release because it was only a one season show. It was uh, Canada, Maine. It was actually done in Toronto by a bunch of stop motion animators that have since been out of business, which I visited their studio, which was pretty cool. Um, and it was, it was, I think it was like co coffee cup animation. And it was a show called the wrong coast. Now the wrong coast only lasted for one season and it aired on the HBO, the Canada, the Canada HBO equivalent called the movie network. And it was a stop motion show that, you know, honestly did parodies of movies and satires of movies, especially around like the late nineties, early two thousands. But the way the show was set up, it was hosted by two people that were meant to represent the show Entertainment Tonight. So, um, who's the who's the original host of Entertainment Tonight? Like the chick and the guy, because um, we I, I watch Entertainment Tonight. I I always used to love that shit. But they were de in the show Wrong Coast. They were Debbie Sue Shante Melendez and Jamison Burkwright. And what was great about Jamison Burkwright, this Toronto animated stop motion animated show, Jamison Burkwright was voiced by Mark Hamill. And I love Mark Hamill. So hearing Luke Skywalker voice essentially a, a co-host on an entertainment show was great. But they had all these amazing uh, parodies and like some of the best, some of the funniest. Like they had one called William Shatner and the Chocolate Factory. And it was literally William Shatner, overweight William Shatner as Willy Wonka, going up to Charlie and being like, come with me and we'll be in a world of pure imagination. And, you know, they had one of my favorites, which you can't find anymore, is they did a spoof on the whole extended editions of Lord of the Rings, but it was about how Aragorn's sword, Undriel, talks. And it's the fun it was the funniest shit back in the day. Um, there's some episodes out there you cannot find. And again, this show is very rare to come by. In fact, I would love to actually go down to where Coffee, Crisp, Coffee Cup Studios is and, like, you know, have an interview with them because I have interviewed with them before. I have talked with them before, and I want to say 
can I get a copy of the show? Because I love the show so much. But they did other shows. They did Life's a Zoo. They did Celebrity Deathmatch. They did all those shows, and they were all in stop motion. So um, go check out their content. They're actually really good if you can find them. I'm surprised people like Animat haven't discussed them yet. So uh, let's see. Um, so there's a whole thing on, uh, on Cartoon Network and Cartoons for events. Let's change the subject. Um, I'm doing good, Decade Prime. I'm just catching up on comments. One moment. Uh, what's my favorite game console? That's a very good question, Roadshow Films. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo was my childhood game console. I remember playing it at my cousin's, and then I eventually did get one. And on my gaming shelf, I have over 100 games for the Super Nintendo. That is the one I collect the most. Like, I've really cut down on my game collection rate lately. I actually have really cut down. But nowadays, um, if like, the one game collection I don't get rid of at all, it's Super Nintendo. My goal is to get every game for that console. So, Super Nintendo was the best. Again, this is the question I get, Alex, is uh, if I ever make a sequel to my column. I don't think I ever will, and I just... There have been several videos I've discussed this, so if you want to go see those, check those out. Uh, thoughts on Gigantosaurus and Jurassic World 3? Um... I think the last one just left a really bad taste in my mouth and I'm just, but I look, it's very rare that a Jurassic park movie for me personally is bad. Like we've had now five movies and two out of five have not been the best, but three out of five is still pretty solid. So I'm counting on this one to actually still say that this franchise is still fun to do. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, Game Boy Advance video was awful. Yeah, you know what? Actually, oh god, I remember Game Boy Advance video, and I had Dragon Ball GT and the SpongeBob one. I have the Dragon Ball GT one, and it's only two episodes, and they're filler episodes. One of them being an episode that they um, because here's apparently what happened with GT when they aired it. They were concerned that because of how it went in Japan, that people the ratings started to decline after Z. Uh. What Funimation did was they actually never aired the first, few, I think, 15 episodes. And what they did was their first episode that they aired was called A Grand Problem. And it was essentially a, um, it took place during the 15th episode and they cut it down where they would show the first 15 episodes of the show in a clip show. Literally the first on-air episode of Dragon Ball GT in America by Funimation was a clip show. Shows the kind of quantity we're dealing with. So, thankfully, they did later release it on DVD, and they actually originally released them as the Lost Episodes, which is kind of cool. But they have it fully on DVD on the box set, which is pretty cool. Let's see here. Yeah, Cartoon Network has changed. Uh, uh, let's see here. I want to find a good one. I would love this. A, Ter a Tarakoski Kong show? Like, if it was, like, Primal? Fuck yeah, I would watch that. Um... Let's see here. I'm trying to... Holy crap. There's so many comments going by. I think we missed like thou, a few thousand. Um, uh, oh, this is a good question that Rose Show has. Uh, what are my personal favorite Big Jack Films reviews episodes, i.e. the episodes that are of both Kong reviews and Big Jack Films? Because they're all in the same continuity. Very good question. And actually, I want to pass that on when we go to the next set of comments. Uh, thank you so much, Light Post Productions, for saying happy birthday. I just caught that. But I do want to ask everybody, what are your personal favorite episodes of my show? Let me know in the chat, and I would love to have this discussion. Um, because this is the kind of discussion. So if you want to ask me what my favorite episodes are, Rosho, I will pick them out per season. Season one, I mean, you, I always tell people, people ask me, um, you know, like, I want to watch your show, where should I start? And I would actually say skip the first two seasons only because they are actually looking back on them are really cringe. Like they're really bad. They're not like they're because I was just starting off. I understand that. But season two, especially the quality is awful. I look like ass. And that's only because when I was shooting it, I was rushing to universal to get to it before it got busy. So my hair is a mess. I look like ass. I've gotten sunburn. I looked terrible, but if I were going to pick my favorite episodes per season, so let me think about this. Season one was only, I think, I think a total of like 13 episodes, uh, or maybe 20. I'd say my favorites in season one were, um, in terms of the Kong reviews, probably a mix between the original two Toho thumbs, be because that was my first set of episodes I did at a con. And then it was things such as, um, I think the 76 episode, a lot of people enjoy because that really brought, I think that my, 
my review essentially brought people attention to say this movie actually is pretty solid. Like it's a good movie. Everybody before that said, oh, it's fucking terrible. But I think my positivity about the film actually brought a lot of people out to say it actually is a good movie. Uh, and then aside from that with season one, I would say maybe my Christmas uh, special episode that I did. That was fun to do with uh, Bradley of Obscure Media TV, which you guys could, should go subscribe to. Um, you know, that was one of my favorite episodes. I One episode I kind of looked back on, it wasn't well made, but the ending was actually pretty fun because there's one person who shows up. And that's my Oz the Great and Powerful episode. Because uh, that had the only appearance of Brett on the show. And Brett played Jack Driscoll in our movie. And it's funny, I've actually reached out. I've heard from Brett recently. I've been talking to him a lot. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Brett, the reason you don't see him around, especially after Kong, uh, he's a dad. He's a father. And he is taking care of a very loving son. Like, he loves that kid to death. And he's a good dad. He's a really good dad. And so, you know, like, if you guys want to see him back, you know, if you want to see him on here... Uh, just shout it out in the comments. Put it in the comments saying, just bring back, just hashtag bring back Brett, BBB. Just make that a thing. If you guys want Brett back, I will show him that and he'll be probably be encouraged to be like, you know what? I might come back. Let me know and so on. But yeah, so back to my favorite episodes. Uh, Season two. Season two is where I really started to figure like kind of what the formula was, sort of, mildly. But season two had a lot. Uh, it had the Jurassic Park legacy uh, starting off, which I did enjoy those episodes, even though those episodes are poorly made because like half the time you look at the background, my room's a mess. And I was shooting those late at night and just out of, because I wanted to get something out for when the movie, new movie came out. But I would, I should point this out too, is that uh, the first Jurassic Park review actually did get a copyright claim from Universal. I tried to dispute it under fair use and they wouldn't take it. So there's a possibility I might go back and re-edit it so it can file under it so I can still make my monetization on the episode. So just, uh, I'll bring that, I'll put that in mind. But I did enjoy the legacy reviews. Was Jaws Month part of Season 2? I can't remember. I think it was. I think Jaws Month was part of Season 2. That was probably my personal favorite. And then other than that, I can't remember what even... I think the season finale of season two was kind of a dud. It was another Christmas special. It was on Christmas, Christmas tree. But other than that, I think that's when we really started to find our footing as a series. Like that's when the show really started to work was in that phase. Um, then you get to season three. I think season three is where I think my work really started to get good. Um, obviously the lost Kong film episodes. I am very proud of that work. That's some of probably my personal favorite Kong episodes was in that whole run of the Lost Films, because I'm the first to talk about it, and I'm the first to accomplish that, which is great. Um, I love the Reign of Kong episode, just because that was me filming it at the park. For, because literally, when I wrote that episode of season three of Reign of Kong, it was that and the Back to the Future episode. I literally wrote both those episodes on my ride to Florida. I wrote both those episodes... I was in the back of the van, my parents were driving, and I would be in the corner all crammed in with my little laptop typing away the, the scripts, and then I would send them to my phone so that when we got to the hotel at Universal, I could go up early, I can prep everything, and I knew exactly what to shoot. So I spent one day on Back to the Future and then one day on Kong filming all that, and that was wonderful. That was really great. And um, a huge thank you to uh, Brachio InGen, uh, Bernard Keir, who composed Kong for us, for helping us out because he um, he's a wonderful guy and helping us support to get to the parks and everything. So anyway, um, go subscribe to him. But in terms of uh, epi in terms of episodes, Reign of Kong is one of my personal favorites because literally filming that I'm telling you right now that is probably the most genuine first time review you'll ever see that's scripted because literally I filmed the first bit of the episode first before I, like literally me freaking out like screeching and like literally saying that's not a bad idea hang on a sec and like showing filming my first ride through that was all legit because i did not go on the ride yet i got there super early to film my segments but i literally filmed those and then went on the ride went on the ride and did that segment and then i did that little skit segment i knew i was gonna do with 18 punching me and shit then I came back the next day and I was able to write my review. I was able to write it all the way through and figure out, okay, basically I just need to shoot the live segments and then I can go to do the editing later. So that was all very genuine to do that first episode. So, or to do that episode in general. 
Uh, and then if you're outside of that, Big Jack Films Review, season three had a lot of great episodes. Some of my favorites. Things like um, it had, okay, it did have the King of the Apes episode, which is one of my highest rated episodes. In fact, I've had people, like, like that was wonderful to do um, that episode because it really started to bring in a storyline that was really coming uh, in, into fruition. Uh, my Back to the Future episode, probably I would say my most least successful. And I was really disappointed with that because I was really working hard on that. And then when it first came out, like, I mean, now it's got thousands of views. But guys, when that episode aired, it kind of tanked and it kind of blew from like, I was like, I worked so hard on that and getting the car and all that jazz. And it was great. But to see it kind of flop like that, I was like, oh, fuck. But look, it's gl I'm glad it's coming out now over time because that's one of my favorite episodes. Um, hang on. We got a couple people. Hang on a sec. Um, yeah, so that was one of my favorite episodes. Uh, obviously, the video games episode, working with James Rolfe, one of my one of my uh, like inspirations to get on YouTube. Um, and, you know, him and I are just really good friends. So he's a really great guy to, to work with. Uh, but there's a lot of great episodes in season three. Season four, uh, was very chill. Uh, season four, some of my favorite, my, a lot of the fan film stuff, reviewing my own movie was great. Again, to get James on that. Uh, the prologue was great, which I have plans to tell stories in between that. that kind of explain my character going to Yokai Academy. I want a whole story about that. But yeah, it's just there are some great episodes um, that I've that I've accomplished, and I mean, even that was season four, season five, which was last year, I think. Is it last year? No, no, season five was the year. I don't even know what are we on. What season are we on? Are we on season six? Okay, if you want to know my personal favorite episodes of current years, uh, Rosho films, it's my Dragon Ball Evolution 100th episode. That was just that was probably some of my best effort. The original Star Wars trilogy and probably Power Rangers and there's just a, there's a lot of great episodes. I can't decide. Maybe at some point, maybe when I get to 200 episodes, I will maybe do a top 10 of my favorite episodes I've made. But yeah, that will be kind of where I'm at. So let's see what the comments. What are your guys' favorite episodes? Let's have a discussion and let's see who has their favorite episodes. Let's see here. Um, holy shit, there's a lot of comments. I missed a lot. I apologize, guys. Um, wow. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm having parodies. Uh, happy birthday, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Light Post Films. Guys, go subscribe to him. He's uh, in a bit of a slump. I think he would appreciate the subscriber count. Um, but let's see here. I want to find. I want to find comments on my. Uh, Thing. The man, the myth, it's Jack. Thank you so much. WAC97. I love that name. Um, oh, here you go. Here you go, Light Post Films. Light Post Films, I just subscribed to your channel and I'm, I'm enjoying the Fandemic show, especially the He-Man month. See? There you go, Light Post. You've got some people worth uh, who want to watch your stuff. Uh, so let's see here. What are favorite episodes? Um, hmm. I'm trying to find where they were. What the fuck? Uh... Uh, where the, where the fuck are all the favorite episodes? Um, oh, this is a good question. Smith says, am I going to do a collab? I don't think he even knows I exist. I love Brendan's videos, but if he were to invite me down to do it, I would love to do it. I would love to jump on that with him. Uh, but probably, I mean, I know Godzilla vs. Kong I have plans, but like the original, I'd love to talk about that movie again. I love that film. I'm, the more I go back and watch King Kong vs. Godzilla, the more my opinion changes of like how much I actually do enjoy it because that was one of my first Godzilla movies as a kid. Uh, let's see here. Holy shit. Um, okay, so Spider-Man's Prime, the Lion King episode. So... I really enjoyed that episode of uh, making that because I want, I knew I, what I wanted to do with that episode because I did want to talk about the film because the live action movie was coming out. And I did want to talk about how it is one of my favorite Disney films. Oh man, the copyright claims getting that episode out was fucking garbage because every, I think I uploaded it probably about five or six times and Disney kept claiming it and I hated it. I just wanted it undetected and they kept claiming it no matter what I did. So that's why I've been very cautious in talking about Disney stuff. But I really enjoyed working that episode because I got to film that at the Toronto Zoo, which is a wonderful zoo, by the way. And what was great about filming that is that I actually got there super early to get some nice shots of the animals and when it was really quiet. 
and some of the shots of the lions and stuff. It was wonderful, wonderful um, way of uh, shooting that. I had a t oh, I didn't see it. Hold up, I'm gonna check that. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes. My fan film review. That's another. I think we got a super chat. Uh, Kaji Network just said we had a super chat. Oh, it's from. Okay, yeah, there we go. Joker Rose. Okay, hold on, Joker Rose. Let me find your super chat. There he is. Thank you so much, Joker Rose. Got something for you, buddy. I know it's not much, but keep making great videos. My favorite episode was your Dragon Ball Z special from Joker Rose. Thank you so much, Joker Rose, uh, for the donation. Really appreciate that. I'm really. I also want to thank Kaiji Network for monitoring the chat because um, I can't keep track of half this shit. But a, a big thank you to him. But again, thank you, Joker Rose. The Dragon Ball Z episode, the hundredth episode. Wow, that was crazy. Um, working on that episode, I knew it was good. Like, here's here's kind of the process. If you want to know my the, more behind the scenes on it, uh, go check out our audio commentary. Uh, there is going to be a blooper reel at some point. It's just taking a long time to edit all the bloopers because there's a lot. But in terms of that episode. At first, I thought I could do it in one episode, you know, a 30 minute review. But as, but then, like, obviously, my writers, creators, Josh, Brad, and everybody, they wanted to get involved and they were adding notes. They, Josh came up and watched the movie, and Josh is not a Dragon Ball fan. He's never sat through Dragon Ball in his life. So this was his first time. He's more of a Yu Gi Oh fan. In fact, he wants me to cover the first Yu Gi Oh movie, Pyramid of Light. And I'm kind of a mild Yu Gi Oh fan, but I remember watching that and we were cracking jokes. We were making laughs. It was very much like a first viewing on Nostalgia Critic. And we were watching it and we're cracking jokes. And I just wrote that all into the script. So it, it, at first I thought it was going to be a basic review, but then it turned it out to be a scripted review, which takes longer when meaning a, a riff review, a, a riff view, because meaning like you're doing riffs as you're talking about the movie. I didn't expect that, but then it got more ambitious. This was like, okay, you know what? Not only do I, this has to be a very special episode. So it was things like finally explaining where things came from, like where 18 came from, how she fits into the continuity of the show. She's still in Dragon Ball and kind of solving all these questions a lot of people have, you know, and it reminded me a lot of like sort of promoting it. It reminded me a lot of like when the first Doug movie that came out, which I, that movie's so cringe, but the way they promoted it, I think it had like 20 titles too, like Doug the movie, the first Doug movie ever, Doug's first, they didn't know what to call it, Right. And I remember the like the announcer would be like, oh, the secrets will be revealed. You're like, oh, shit. Okay, yeah. So it was going to be one of those episodes where we were going to just, the promotion was going to be like, where did 18 come from? How does Big Jack Films know these characters? Will he enjoy the movie or is he a huge Dragon Ball fan? All the secrets will be revealed. It's like, we kind of revealed a lot. And we did leave a couple of questions open for later. But yeah, that was just, it's one of my favorite episodes. And just filming all that green screen, I took a whole night to shoot all that. And it was just me on my own with the cameras, with the green screen. And it was from like six in the evening till six in the morning. It was a 12 hour shoot filming everything. And that was nuts. And I was so tired. I actually think, I think I took like 48 hours to recover from that. But filming all that was crazy. And actually, that was the first, we actually, our 100th episode, we were so invested in that, that we actually uh, bought a new green screen for it. We bought a brand new green screen, and that's been our green screen for uh, to this day, and it's a wonderful piece. Uh, we bought new equipment for it. We knew with this episode, we had to improve, we had to update. So it was a, just a big event for us. So when we get to the 200th episode, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be doing for the 200th episode, but at some point that will be happening. But that is one of my favorite episodes. And actually, and so thank you again, uh, uh, Joker Rose for donating $20. That's going to go towards our funding for later projects. Um, guys, if you guys want, go subscribe to him. I'm sure he's got plenty of content. Please do. Uh, Emma Clark has a question. Uh, your Zoro 20th anniversary review was really fun to watch and gave me a reason to love Zoro again. Now, it's funny enough, um, Emma, is that I'm actually getting back into it again. And it's I think the reason why I wanted to discuss it, one, it was the film's 20th anniversary. Two, it was the film that didn't introduce me to the character. Uh, three, it's funny how like we're now at the stage where Zoro is 100 years old. And I want people to think about this. The Mark of Zorro, the 1920s film starring Douglas Fairbanks from the silent era, was the first superhero movie. 
And not only the first superhero movie, the first action movie, the first adventure movie, the first swashbuckler, that one film from 1920 changed everything in film. Everything. Like, I even say even more than Kong, even more than others. This was the movie that defined the cinema experience. So, the Mark of Zorro, like, just knowing the character is 100 years old, knowing his origins created by Johnston, the great Johnston McCulley uh, in, in Southern California, uh, you know, and seeing this hero basically inspire the likes of Batman and so on. Did we freeze? Did we just freeze? Can you guys still hear me? Don't tell me we just froze. No way. Can you guys still hear me? Anybody? Can anybody still hear me? Let me know. We might have to go to a part two. Let me know. Let me try this. Okay. Oh, wait. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Yeah. You guys can hear me now. Let me try this again. Okay. Yeah. So for some reason, my camera's fucked. My camera's frozen. So I have to go like this for a little bit. That's fucking weird. Um, that sucks. You know, okay, audio's okay, but okay, so we might have to go like this for a little bit. I don't know why the hell that happened. But anyway, so back to Zorro. Um, Zorro turned 100, and it was like he was the first um, action-adventure hero. And you know what I'm going to do very quickly? I'm going to see if I, I'm going to just put myself out of the stream and put myself back in. Let me add to stream. Let me try this. Um, it's a little layout. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to... Okay, you know what, guys? Uh, my camera's fucked. This sucks. I might redo the stream, but let, let me just go for now. For right now, we'll stick with this. But, yeah, The Mark of Zorro, um, it really did change cinema. And part of me at some point does want to talk about more of the movies. Uh, I want to talk about the 20s film. I want to talk about the Tyrone Power. I want to talk about the... Di there's one thing, and there's a couple of Zorro stuff that is very unappreciated. The 70s Spaghetti Western... The uh, 1997 animated series on Kids WB, uh, the anime Kaiketsu Zoro is amazing. I love the anime, and I really also enjoy the, um, there's one other Zoro thing I like, but there's all that stuff, so I've been kind of getting back into it again, so maybe someday, uh, maybe if like things don't work out with the projects I want to do, that might be on the playing table too. So, guys, I'm actually going to cut this short, and I'm actually going to try to see if I can reset the stream, because this sucks. I want to keep talking to you guys. You guys have great ideas and great discussions, so we might make this a part two. So, just stay tuned. If you guys have any more questions, let me know in the comments, or come back to the stream. Of course, don't forget to support our Patreon, support our Twitter and everything. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off. I will be back. I'll be back in a sec. Just bear with me. Let me see if I can fix this shit.